All right, Orchard students, we are back. It is Palm Sunday. Uh, great to be with you. Thanks for watching. Today, Pastor Saad shared a story about his son being lost. Uh, and so I wanted to start with that question of, have you ever been lost? Uh, as he was telling the story, I realized this is one of my fears, losing one of Pastor Assad's kids at a church camp and having to tell him about it. Uh, but I've moved beyond it. I'm ready to teach you a little bit here. So um, being lost, it can, be, it can have to do with your physical surroundings, uh, like you're, you're lost and can't find your way home, or it could be an internal struggle that you might be feeling. And so I don't know which one of those you're related to more today, but I want to talk a little bit more about what it means to be lost. It's simply just you're unable to find um, your way. You don't know where you are. I remember a time when I was lost, I was hiking and I had my dog with me. Um, and we, it was starting to get dark, and I realized I had no idea where I was or how to get back to my car. Um, I was unprepared. I didn't have a flashlight. I was probably wearing sandals. Um, I didn't have a, or back then, the phones, my flip phone didn't have a map on it. Um, it was lost. I was cold, and I was very concerned. Um, and I realized as I look back to it, I think one of the reasons I got lost was that I started it without having an end goal in mind. I didn't really know where I wanted to go. I just knew that I wanted to hike around. And um, that problem where without God we're lost, that, I think that's where a lot of people find themselves is they pursue things in life that don't involve God and then they find themselves lost without purpose and without meaning. And so there's a lot of things that can have us feeling lost, whether it be... Um, whether it be something small or something big, like going to school was canceled and you had to figure out how to do it all at home with your computers and your parents or all of a sudden your teachers. Um, when we face disruption in our life, it can feel like we're lost, like we um, have new circumstances to struggle through and figure out. I want to read this first from Romans. Uh, what, one of the passages that re the Saad read today really stuck out to me. It says this, it says, not only... So, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I want to talk to you a little bit about that word suffering, okay? As you look into that word and what it means in the context of this passage, it can mean that there's pressure being applied to you or pressure being applied to something. And it's, um, it can feel like the walls are caving in. It has this word of narrowing where you're just being squeezed. And it reminds me of just uh, like stress, I think is another word that you could use in that situation. When you are feeling under pressure, when you're feeling stressed, when you're feeling lost, there's three things I think we can do to dig in and kind of get through those moments and find our way back. The first is that we can be um, people of hope by celebrating the wins in our life. So each day you experience something good, a high point in your day, and that um, needs to be celebrated. That is a glimmer of hope in your day. Um, we know that as Christians, we have an eternal hope. We can say that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven I'm going to have a perfect relationship with God at that point. But we also have a daily hope. And so um, one of the ways that we can feel like we're moving forward in life is to cling on to that hope that we can experience each day. Um, so celebrate those moments in youth ministry. We call it our highs and our lows. Okay, second is that you, um, this is the time where you can commit to being a part of God's family. So um, if you're a Christian, then you have a bunch of brothers and sisters all around you, ones that you don't even know. Um, and in this moment of isolation, when you are removed from all your normal interactions with people, you have to be intentional to reach out and to um, initiate relationships and to respond to text messages and to ask to Zoom people. Um, part of committing to God's family is that you're responsible for initiating interaction um, and building relationships with the, within God's families. All right, the third thing is I want you to keep a big picture mindset. Uh, I love those pictures as a kid when you'd go to a restaurant and you'd get the kid packet and there'd be the dots that you would connect and then it would turn into like a shape, like a pancake or something like that. And you would start with dot number one and then go to dot number two, dot number three, dot number four. 
eventually it turns into a, a picture. Well, this time in your life right now is just a little dot in the story that God is telling with your life. And so we need to keep a, a big picture perspective of what God is doing and trust that he has our best interest in mind. This week, we want to be students that are bringing hope into our community. So we can do that very practically by using that hashtag Orchard Hope, calling out all the things that God is doing in our life. And what people are going to see when you do that is they're going to see that you are someone who's learning their way through this challenging time in their life, and they're going to want to follow um, and have that relationship that you have uh, with Jesus. And so uh, let's get on it, students. Let's, uh, let's do it. And uh, we'll see you this week at our Zoom meetings on Monday and Thursday.